Oh man, have I been looking forward to this. The vacuum tube bow, the weapon I did dirty so long ago, except that I kind of didn't. So let me explain. When this weapon was out on its very first day, I made what is typically a very bad sign, and that was a short video on this weapon. Nowadays, I always try to stretch to eight minutes because it turns out you can put in an extra ad and then feeding myself becomes easier. So I appreciate you guys watching. But back in the day, if a, if a weapon didn't keep my interest and I didn't have much to say, three and a half minutes was about as long as the video would get. And I don't really regret that because when the vacuum tube weapon came out, it was bad. So when the vacuum tube bow came out, the chain lightning only activated when you eliminated an enemy and it had a four second cooldown. And this was extremely disappointing because when bows were first coming out, they were pretty bad. I mean, the boom bow didn't impress and the compression burster was actually called the depression burster by Tic Tac when he covered it. And that pretty much says it all. It was basically just a worse boom bow. And that was basically the trend that bows were going in. And I always said from the very beginning, you should make a bow chain lightning to other enemies. I will continue to say, like, I specifically said, make a bow chain to other enemies, give you some method of, like, area of effect. And that's essentially what they did with the vacuum tube bow. Remember, Pharaoh was not anywhere in anybody's mind at that point. I don't know if the devs were working on her. Well, I actually do know that because Mad just said that they introduced the bows with the idea in mind that they would create a hero that affects all of them. So I guess Pharaoh was planned at the very beginning, but not released until later. My point is, Pharaoh did exactly what I wanted. She made it so that it chains to other enemies, but the vacuum tube bow did it as well. And I was so disappointed with this weapon because it didn't really do that as well. Eliminating an enemy was kind of tough for a bow, especially without Pharaoh. And giving that chain a four second cooldown was brutal. So the vacuum tube bow was historically just a really, really big flop right out of the gate. They had a very fantastic weapon idea and then flopped. But the update came around. I don't actually remember when it was, but the update came around and made this weapon weapon activate after hitting an enemy with no cooldown and and I'm not sure if this was exactly how it functioned originally but it would strike up to six enemies on day one it felt more like they were rolling a dice but nowadays it will chain to as many enemies as it can and if there are only two enemies in range it'll actually chain between those two enemies capping out at six so it is a very very effective bonus now there was a brief period of time where they made it so that when Pharah's you know chain happened it also triggered the lightning that would strike up to about 30 enemies and was way more powerful powerful than the devs thought it should be, so I understand why they patched it, but goodness this weapon was god tier when that was a thing, so a lot of people are still salty about them patching that, but I'd rather a weapon be very very good than debatably overpowered. They didn't really make the weapon bad, they just didn't make it as broken as they, uh, as they did. So, I am okay with where the vacuum tubo landed, some people aren't, but that's okay. So hopefully that recap wasn't too bad. I like to give a little bit of a history on these weapons and the vacuum tube bow has always had a place in my heart of regret because they made the update where it fixed that six perk a long, long time ago. But the hype for this weapon never really went up until it was broken. And I didn't want to cover it when it was broken, but then the hype went up in the worst direction because people were really angry about the weapon after they patched it. And so I never really found a good time to talk about this weapon. Also considering the fact that it never technically re-released, which is actually a good thing because if you look at the collection book you can go down to the expansion schematics right now down to the vacuum tube weapons and I'm not certain if you can research it no it appears you need a voucher but you can get the vacuum tube bow from regular llamas so if you have so if you actually go to the llama shop you might see it in one of your upgrade llamas someday so that is something to look out for now on the topic of whether or not you should use a voucher on it that is totally up to you I'm gonna link the weapon voucher video down below you can figure it out from there but the vacuum tube bow let's talk about it a little bit more obviously it chains lightning that's obviously a given. That's something we've mentioned a lot here. And being a vacuum tube weapon, it is locked to nature. So it's going to be very effective against water enemies, which is partially why I'm recording this video now. And probably why I should have recorded it like a week ago, because we are currently in a frost area mission thing. Let me go to the map and show you. So because it's December, it's the winter season, just about every single four player has a water modifier on it, meaning water zombies will be spawning like crazy. So that ice storm is just on every single mission. And this includes vent so having a lightning bow is a pretty good pick and it is very very powerful we were running this 160 retrieve the data earlier and boy this vacuum tube bow was very very effective in the hands of my teammates and myself while we were running that mission so the vacuum tube bow was a very good pick and if you're going to be using that weapon let's talk about the perks you should put on it so the vacuum tube bow is much like all the other bows where a crit build is 
pretty standard, but let's talk about it a little bit and explain why I'm running what I'm running. Because a lot of people very early on like to recommend double crit rating, double crit damage. And while I understand the idea behind that, you want to, you know, up the chance that it's going to crit, that really only makes sense if you're running Sub-Zero Zenith with this build, which can work, I guess, if you want to freeze your enemies in place. It's kind of a good combo with a nature weapon. But I don't really recommend it at all because you're going to lose two things. Um, in the very beginning, fire rate didn't exist, but you will be losing the fire rate and you will be losing the reload speed. And reload speed is extremely important with bows because it is essentially your fire rate. Your fire rate on this bow is 2.5, but it doesn't really matter because the reload is going to be slowing that down by even more. And that is also to say that the charge time is a thing. I should have mentioned this at some point earlier, but I will state it now that if you are trying to get that chain lightning to activate, you do need the bow to be drawn at least halfway, like it says here. So be sure to be always drawing it halfway if you're trying to get it to chain. Uh, that will also increase the damage based on how far you draw it. I'm not certain how to tell when it's fully drawn back. Maybe somebody in the comments can let you know. I'll pin any corrections or if we find out down below. So you guys can always check the pin comment for any updated news. So I definitely recommend a reload perk. If you, for some reason, do not care about reload and can totally go without it, then a second crit damage would be really, really helpful. But I also used to run this weapon, reload fire rate, double, uh, double damage. And that is also completely fine. It is less DPS and you won't be critting for a million damage if you if you run all damage, but it will be very consistent damage output. And while I don't recommend it, you can do it and it's not going to matter. Uh, I do not believe that the lightning crits. So if that does crit at some point, then a crit build is going to be even more fantastic, but I, I don't really recommend it. The argument that I always make for crit builds is that when you hit an enemy with a bow, uh, usually... Even with a crit, you're not going to one-shot it. Now, I'm not talking about the normal enemies. They're going to get deleted by the lightning. I'm talking about the enemies that really matter. Smashers, Miss Monsters, Husks, uh, I mean, the fat Husks, <laughs> the mini-bosses. Those are the ones that are going to be taking multiple shots. And if you're going to be taking multiple shots anyway, it stands to figure that at some point you are going to crit. So I've switched this to crit build and honestly preferred it. There are times where, and I wasn't exaggerating, with a full party of like other 130 pluses, I was able to crit for a million damage. That's especially possible if you hit for the head because it does about triple damage, uh, a little bit less than two and a half or so. It is definitely preferred to go with a crit build on this for those reasons. Now, you could do like double crit damage, even though you'd lose the reload if you want to run totally rocking out with a, with a bow build like this, but I'm not 100% certain that that's too necessary, but that is a way that people can run it. And fire rate might also be a little bit debatable. So some people might not prefer fire rate. I think that uh, being able to draw this weapon faster and have it draw to full even faster is much preferred. Every time I've ever switched to fire rate, I've preferred it. In fact, I run it on the Xenon bow as well, which is a weapon that could use a little bit more oomph when you're trying to shoot through multiple enemies. But hey, I guess that's why I supercharged it, right? So you could even see that the vacuum tube bow is doing more damage than the Xenon bow and it's not even supercharged. So yeah, the Xenon bow shoots through multiple enemies, so it's not exactly the same comparison, but the vacuum tube bow clearly doesn't really really need any more help as it is. So that's pretty much the best perks for this. You can roll fire rate double damage. You could do reload triple damage. I can't recommend any situation where you're not running a reload perk on this. That's just my personal opinion. If you think, ah, screw this guy, then sure, go, do go double crit damage. But I warned you, you will be reloading very slow and your teammate next to you running reload will be popping off a lot more shots and they'll probably be a lot more effective. So that's the vacuum tube bow. If you guys want to support the channel, feel free to use code MIST at your checkout. If you guys want to become a channel member, you can do so here with the join button or the link in the description below. You guys can use those emotes down in the comments. Check out my streams. They're awesome. We have a pretty good time. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. <laughs>